Thank you for joining us again on Biology Weekly. Today we'll be talking about our common ancestors, ancestors, monkeys, and us. So basically about the amazing tree of life. A lot of people believe that humans are an upgrade of monkeys. If humans are an upgrade of monkeys, then only the upgraded versions should still exist, right? So basically, if we're seeing humans around us right now, then only the upgraded version as humans should be visible. Why do we still see monkeys around us? This question or statement itself is wrong because humans are not an upgrade of monkeys. Humans are not an upgrade of any living being that we see around us right now. In fact, no living thing that you see around you is an upgrade of any other living thing that you see around you. All living things that you see around you right now are equally evolved. So basically in evolution, only time matters. So at this time, every living thing that you see around you is as evolved as you are. So from a mosquito to a mushroom to a banana to a monkey to you, to me, we're all equally evolved. We shall see how. Let's go to this peacock example here that we uh, discussed in the previous video, in the first video where we spoke about basic uh, genetic inheritance, genes, how genes are passed on and evolution. For those who already saw that video, you may want to skip this video for like a minute or two, but I would suggest that you stay with us and recall a short summary of the previous video because that will really help with this uh, today's topic as well. So this peacock here, let's focus on one cell in the feather of a peacock because we want to understand how this peacock has these beautiful colors. So every cell is a building block of life, but within this basic building block, there are other components too. So Cells have nucleus in them, and nucleus have chromosomes in them, or pairs of chromosomes. So we humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Apples have 17 pairs of chromosomes. That peacock there has 38 pairs of chromosomes. Within the chromosomes, one can find DNA, and within the DNA, you can find gene. So basically, it's this gene that causes uh, you to have certain traits or certain characteristics. So the color of this peacock here is caused by what is known as gene or genetic expression. And we have variation in the population because while the parents pass on their genes to their offspring, then two things can occur. So one is genetic recombination and the other is mutation. So genetic recombination is when there are many copies of genes and they get shuffled while passed on to the next offsprings. So some offsprings get a different copy of the gene, whereas other offsprings get another copy of the gene. So this way, even though they come from the same parents, siblings look different from each other. So this is genetic recombination. And mutation is the change in uh, genes, so which can occur in the gene and the DNA. So uh, mutations are also responsible for genetic variation and variation in the population. So if one atom of hydrogen is replaced by an oxygen atom, see, this can happen everywhere in the gene, and this can happen right now as we're talking, and during development of a child and during inheritance of traits from parent to child. So because of this, we have variation in the population. And because of this variation, no two siblings look the same from each other. And because of this variation, no living being, no individual looks the same as each other. All of us look different. And to quickly explain natural selection, which is something that acts on this variation, we can use a classic textbook, textbook example. So the theory of um, evolution by natural selection was uh, penned by Darwin. And this example over here will let us explain it a little better. So um, we have a species of peppered moths here. So they come in two colors, black and white, and they are uh, prey to predators like this bat here. In 1800 London, because of Industrial Revolution, there was a lot of black smog in the air. So because of this black smog, it covered up tree barks as well. So now the black moths got hidden and the white ones were more visible. So because of this, the black ones were eaten less and the white ones were eaten more by these bats. So there were more bats in the black moths in the population and there were lesser white moths in the population. So this way the color black got selected for while white did not. So this is natural selection and this is how different species originated and that's what Darwin talks about in his Origin of Species book. So uh, let us also look at our examples of us and our siblings. So we came from our parents. And that's our generation. And our cousins also belong to our generation. But our cousins and us, we came from our parents and aunts and uncles, right? And they came from our grandparents. And our grandparents came from our great-grandparents. And this process or this flow or this chart keeps going on and on and on. 
and our family tree then gets connected to the family tree of animals and overall and over so forth and finally we have this whole tree of life where we have all the species on earth so <clears throat> if we go really 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 back then what we can find is what is called the last universal common ancestor or LUCA. So all bacteria, animals, plants, etc. are evolved from this last universal common ancestor or LUCA. So the primates, apes, monkeys that we see around us and humans, we all have evolved from the same common ancestor. So the common ancestor of monkeys and humans is one common ancestor and it's most likely just a fossil right now. We did not come from monkeys. Monkeys and we, we both branched from the same common ancestor. So in this um, figure here, that's where we have animals and that's where we have our peacock here in this example. And here is where we see uh, humans and primates and that blue dot that I show there is the common ancestor of us humans and monkeys. So, <clears throat> Um, uh, studies show that humans and chimpanzees share 98.7 percentage of DNA. So this means that when we branched out of our common ancestor, we humans' DNA differed from chimpanzees by just 1.3 percent. Humans and fruit flies share 61 percentage of DNA, and humans and bananas share 60 percent of DNA. Even most funguses like mushrooms and moss, and we humans also share more than 50 percent of DNA. So this whole idea that man is on the top of the evolution ladder makes no sense. In fact, there is no ladder. The tree of life looks more like this as shown in the right side. And if you see on that figure, all of us from humans to bacteria to animals to birds to trees, we are all in the same location on the evolution tree. No man is above any other man. No, uh, no man is above any other woman. No human is above any other living thing. We are all equal. So I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Do give us your feedback and comments in the comment section below. If you have any questions, do type them in the comment section below as well. Thank you very much. See you again.